This is gonna get a tissue. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for clicking on another video. As you can see by the title of today's video, I have been a doctor for five years. And I just realized that as I was sitting around getting ready for the day, thinking about what I could film and edit for you guys today, I realized that I've been a doctor for five years. I graduated in 2017, it is now 2022. Time has flown by. So I thought what better video to do to celebrate that and to celebrate all the doctors who will be rotating this week over the next few days and all the doctors who will be starting in F1. I thought I would do a video of five things that I've learnt from my work as a doctor in five years. I hope that you like it. If you do, please give the video a thumbs up and click subscribe for more videos. I will warn you that in this video I will be mentioning topics such as life and death. So if that's not something you want to hear about right now, just skip ahead. But if you hang on in there, the last uh, points are really positive and I think you'll find really encouraging. Okay, so in fact they're all encouraging if you think of them the right way. But number one, lesson that I've learned from five years of being a doctor is that life is short. No matter how long it is, life is short. No matter how long someone lives, whether they live to be 105 or just five, life is really short. Once it's over, it's over. And people pass away all the time every moment of every day and I know that sounds really scary and jarring because we live in this world where even though the one guarantee is that everyone will at some point pass away we live life pretending like that isn't going to happen and closing our ears and, and not wanting to think about or talk about death at all but by working as a doctor at the ripe old age of 23 I was forced to face that reality every day every moment of every day, as many other people are who work in healthcare. For me, uh, as someone who's very sensitive and introspective, I really took that to heart. It led to a lot of questions about life and about what I want, what I don't want, what I'm doing here, what's the point in it all. A lot of questions which I allowed myself to follow and I'm really grateful to say that I have a lot more peace about that side of things now, although of course it's an ongoing journey. Um, but it reminded me of a verse in the Bible, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, I never know if I'm saying that right, chapter seven, verse two, that says, it's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting, for death is the destiny of everyone. The living should take this to heart. Now, again, we freak out when we hear that stuff because we're like, oh, I don't want to think about death. I never want to think about death. And I get it. It's not a very nice topic to talk about. But it really says there that the living should take this to heart. I think that being aware and um, knowing that this life will one day end is a good thing because it helps us not to take a breath for granted. But for me, I'm really grateful for the fact that I was forced to deep the fact that people die all the time and you they didn't know that it was going to happen for a lot of people i'm really grateful that i was forced to face that front on at the age of 23 because i believe it's helped me to really appreciate life um, and i'm very grateful for that i think that by understanding that life is short we can be inspired to act now you know, to not assume that something can be done tomorrow or wait till tomorrow. Love now, live now, live your best life now. And by best, I mean most passionate, most true, most honest. Do the things that you need to do to enjoy this absolute gift of life that we've been given. Because by God's grace, you'll live a ripe old age, you'll have a beautiful, peaceful life. But even then, when it's over, it's over. So don't take a single moment for granted. Live now. That is a huge life lesson that I think is absolutely priceless that working as a doctor has taught me. The second thing that working as a doctor has taught me is that love is everything. <laughs> like, when the Bible says that God is love, that's true. Love is why we're all here. You can take away, I low-key believe that you can take away everything else from this world. So success, money, pleasures, all these things. 
but you can't take away love. So if someone, I know that these other things matter, right? If you achieve your dreams, amazing. If you feel really good all the time and are always having pleasurable experiences, amazing. But those things are made what they are because of the fact that we can share them with other people. We can have that loving interaction with another soul, with another being. And so for me, working in medicine has taught me that love is everything, particularly when counseling or being there for patients at the end of their life. When you see the love that people have in their lives, it's what makes it so hard that life should end, but it's also what makes life so beautiful. The fact that we can love each other, the fact that we can connect and have relationships is such a gift. So I really encourage you, no matter what you're working on, prioritizing right now, cool, go for it, live your best life. As I said, all the other things in life also do matter, but don't do it at the expense of love. Always have love for yourself, for yourself and for other people. Love is everything. And medicine has, working as a doctor has taught me that to a T. Love, oh, the biggest blessing of all. The next, now this is a happier note, although I think the first two were happy, if you can sit with them and think about them properly, but the next one that I have, and I've written them all down so I don't miss anything, is that miracles happen all the time. You guys, miracles happen all the time. People are capable of insane things, like incredible things. People can pull through the worst diagnoses. They can have diagnoses that are terrible, and they just blow everyone's mind because they make it through and they survive. And you're like, wait, what? That's not what the book said. That's not supposed to happen. People, miracles happen. Oh, like, now I know that in many respects I'm not supposed to say that because, especially when you're working as a, as a doctor, you have to tell someone what the statistics say. And um, statistics can be terrible. But when I tell you miracles happen, please believe me, they happen. One of the things that I love about medicine is the placebo effect. The placebo effect is when you give someone a sugar pill that does nothing and you observe the effects. And people can take a pill that does nothing and get better and report actual improvements in their symptoms by absolutely nothing at all. Just the fact that they thought they were taking something that makes them get better. The placebo effect is so reliable and so excellent that we actually use it in medicine to compare whether a drug actually works. For a drug to be deemed as doing the function it claims to do, it has to do significantly better than a sugar pill. It has to beat the placebo significantly. And that's hard. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just say that to say, medicine has taught me that miracles happen. Always have hope and faith and belief, as terrifying as that might be, and as emotionally draining as that can feel sometimes, because miracles do happen. And I really believe that our mindset, our beliefs, and our faith are what can open the door to the possibilities of miracles happening. So yes, I've seen a lot of really heartbreaking situations and, and sad things, but I've also seen <laughs> so many miracles in my own life as well as in my patients lives and i'm so grateful for that so so grateful number four <laughs> the fourth lesson that i've learned from being a doctor um, over this time is that you have to look after yourself in order to look after anyone else i learned this the hard way um i think i've mentioned this on this channel before but i found my first year of medicine really hard it was a shock to the system. It was like your whole life, you're building towards something like GCSEs, A-levels, exams, exams, exams. And then it starts and I'm like, oh, this, is, this isn't what I thought it would be. I'm not happy. I'm exhausted and tired and sad and lonely and stressed, constantly stressed. Just living on this like high, anxiety, high functioning state constantly. I had insomnia, I couldn't sleep. You know, dealing with life and death at a young age. And I had a conversation with my mum recently. I don't wanna get emotional, not that there's anything wrong with getting emotional, it's just, I've just done my makeup and I'm about to head out and I genuinely cannot be bothered with <laughs> the consequences of crying right now. But I was having a conversation with my mum the other day and she just really flippantly, jokingly mentioned a memory I can't even remember the context, 
But this memory that she mentioned, I couldn't remember. I have this wonderfully wild ability to block out traumatic memories, you guys. It is crazy. Someone will mention something that happened in the past and I'm like, huh, I, it feels like a dream. And I kind of know it happened. I know they're not lying. But if the thing was particularly painful and traumatic for me, I genuinely will not remember it. Thank the Lord, I say. I don't know what that is. That's probably a conversation for a therapist. But anyway, my mum brings up this memory and I'm like, oh, I know that that happened, but I really can't remember it. And what she tells me is it was towards the end of my first year of working as a doctor. And this is what happened. I say what she tells me. I do remember this in parts. Um, I just had a really long shift. As I say, I was working really long hours. It was always very understaffed. This was before the pandemic as well. The, the NHS was always very understaffed. It was very stressful. Just constant, constant states of stress. Um, and I was, what, 23 at the time. Um, and I was tired. I was so tired. I'd moved away from Birmingham where I studied to Cardiff and I didn't really have many friends. I was really, really unhappy. I, I'm just gonna say it, I was depressed. I was mildly depressed. Um, and I finished work one day and I basically just drove to my mum's place, to my parents' house. Um, and it was late and, and I had called her to tell her that I was on my way because I didn't want to scare her because I, I have a key to my parents' house so I can just let myself in. But I didn't want to scare her so I called her to tell her I was on my way and then when I got there she was in bed, she was lying down and um, I woke her up. And she said I was telling her about my day um, but she was half asleep so she kind of wasn't listening and I shook her and I said to her I said to her um, you're not listening to me you're not listening to me and she took my hand and I was I was physically shaking I was shaking because um, I was just so unhappy I was at the end of like what I could give So, <laughs> I was at the end of what I could give um, and she was telling me about this, this is like a few days ago that we had this conversation and she was telling me this story um, and she was like, she then just sat up, she was like, oh she's shaking, she's, um, and she was saying how upset she was, my mum was, she didn't tell me this at the time, um, but she was so upset that, <laughs> she, was, she was saying, how can they put these children out into this environment and not support them and not give them counselling. So obviously she's my mum. I was 23, she still sees me as a child. I'm out there thinking I'm a big adult, but she would still see me as a child. And she was just like, she knew the stuff I was dealing with, losing patience and how it was affecting me. And she was like, she cannot believe that, um, <laughs> yeah, that we don't get the psychological support uh, that we need. I think that speaks for all NHS workers, <laughs> to be honest. Anyway, she encouraged me. She didn't tell me that at the time that she had been worried or upset, but she kind of encouraged me to go and see my GP. And I remember I did, but I remember not telling my GP the extent of things. Because I was, I was scared that it would mean that I wasn't strong enough to do what I needed to do. And also, because I just didn't see the point. I knew exactly. Sorry, I'm, I need to stop crying. This is the thing with, I'm, as you guys may or may not know, I'm in acting school now. Acting really does just teach you to release your emotions. And once you've released them, it's hard to get them back in. Anyway, I saw my GP and... I kind of just said some, oh, you know, I've been a bit, I've had a bit of insomnia. I've been struggling with work, but I know what, what it is. Once my rotation is over, I'll be better. And it was true. It was very situational, honestly. I was overworked, underpaid. I'm just going to say it. Junior doctors are underpaid in this country. Um, I was overworked. I was underpaid. I was stressed. I was tired. Oh, so brings me back to my point of you cannot look after anyone else if you don't first look after yourself. You have to look after yourself. You have to. 
You will be of no use to anyone else if you don't. You're not here to die to save the lost. You're not. You're not a martyr. A vocation <laughs> should not cost you your life or your mental health or your physical health. And if it does, it's not sustainable. And then what good is it? You know, we have to make our love sustainable so that we can carry on loving. So look after yourself. Happy news, I made a change in the way I was working. I withdrew from full-time medicine and I was able to carry on practicing as a doctor and I loved it. I love it, I love it now. I will not allow, by God's grace, I will not allow myself to get into that state again. I, I simply will not. And I encourage any other medics watching this or any people watching this, please look after yourself. You're literally of no use to anyone if you push yourself off the edge, just don't, just, just look after yourself. You are worthy of the same love that you give to your loved ones. You are worthy of it. If you wouldn't wish that your current quality of life upon your daughter or your son or your most beloved person, then please don't accept it for yourself. Do something to change it. Okay, Soz wasn't supposed to cry. Next, number five. Uh, health matters. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but like health matters. It matters so, so much. When you see person after person dying from smoking related illness or um, alcohol related illnesses or stress related illnesses, um, you realize how much our lifestyle can affect our life, um, which is why I started this channel. It is, was a health and fitness channel um, because I was seeing it and still do see it every day how our lifestyle can affect our health a lot of people don't really know that they know it in theory but they don't know it on a deeper level i believe there are different kinds of knowledge you know you can know about someone then you can know someone there's a deeper level of knowledge and i'm really grateful that my work as a doctor has allowed me to see on a deeper level just how crucial our lifestyles are and how much it affects our health and how important our health is. Healthcare starts with self-care. A pill that will never work is one that someone never takes. So your health is very much to a certain degree, by God's grace, in your hands. There are things that you can do to live a healthier lifestyle, like not smoking, not drinking excessive amounts, eating well, sleeping well, avoiding excessive amounts of constant stress, um, yeah, there's so much that you can do, exercising regularly, eating a healthy diet, and I'm really grateful for that. I'm really grateful for that because I think it's really encouraged me to make the effort in my own life and encourage, with love, my loved ones to make the effort in their life to look after themselves because your body is the temple with which you experience the world, express love to others in this world, and you really do have to look after it in order to carry on doing that. So I'm very grateful that medicine has taught me that lesson. There are so many ways, there are so many horrible things that can happen in this life, but we actually do have a good amount of influence over our health. So I encourage you, if you're currently trying to eat a little healthier, move a little more, keep going, please keep going. You're doing amazingly and it makes all the difference. Please believe me when I tell you it makes all the difference. If you're looking for a workout plan to follow, you can sign up to my plan, Healthy at Home. Link is in the description of this video. You can get my healthy affirmations if you want to work on your mindset towards your physical and mental health. Yeah, health matters, and there's a lot we can do to affect it. Anyway, that was, I don't know if that was just a really sad video. I'm sorry if it was. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be. But that was five things, five lessons I've learned uh, during five years of being a doctor. Honestly, these are all, to me, really valuable lessons, though the way that I've learned them may have involved some pain. I think the best lessons often do, sadly. Uh, but it's been worth it. It's been worth it. And the, these are things that I remember every day that I try to take into every day these lessons because I believe it helps me to live a fuller, happier life. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts below. I hope I haven't made you sad. I only ever want to bring joy and love, but you know, say lovey. Love you so much. I will see you soon. Bye.